up everybody it's your boy the kryptonian saying here bringing you a review for one piece chapter 669 only luffy this classifies as luffy you big dummy okay so let me get this shit straight so luffy gets told to get in there kidnap caesar do it stealthily okay because nico robin says luffy that was supposed to be a secret and Luffy just shouts to everyone after fighting every single person and raising all kind of hell. He says, hey, master, Caesar, whatever your name is, seize this dick. Bring your ass out here. I'm here to kick your ass. Then I'm going to I'm going to kidnap you. Are you OK with that? I hope you are. If you're not OK, I'm going to kidnap you anyway. <laughs> and Law's expression is just priceless. Law is just looking like. What the fuck did I just get into? And I'm going to say this, right? Like, for Law to be as calculating as he is, you have to look at Luffy's character. Like, let's just take everything that we as readers know and just strike it. Let's just strike it from the conversation. And say, when it just comes to Luffy, would you really make an alliance with somebody like Luffy and tell him, hey, we're going to go about doing something in a deceitful way and we're going to try to attempt to capture one of the uh, one one of the world government's most heinous people, and he's on this island doing some crazy shit. And in order to get our way to working towards getting one of the warlords, we need to do this. So let me get this shit straight. You're gonna do all that shit. You're gonna agree with the Caesar stuff. You're going to agree to take down one of the emperors with a guy who was stupid enough to take his ass, not just to impel down, not just to Marine Fort, but he goes to Marine Fort, doesn't have a, a crew with them, basically. He's got like a motley crew of a few people that he can't even fully control, right? And he inserts himself into a war between one of the emperors and the world government. And nearly gets himself killed. And you have to step in. So you're really going to make an alliance with somebody who does not plan shit out. Law holds an L for that. Law holds a serious L. The only thing I can think of is Law might be using Luffy. And that, that foreshadowing was there that pirate alliances usually break up. He's probably looking at Luffy like this guy is super powerful. But at the same time... He's a bumbling idiot. His crew follows him. I can probably manipulate the situation. I can use Luffy to get from A to B, and then I can move on to whatever my next goal is. That's the only thing I can kind of think of, but I can totally see how Law, who looks like he has a super complex plan, is going to quickly get annoyed by Luffy's antics. This is going to be interesting. Like, like you, hear, you hear me talk all the time about conflict, how... Good conflict is great for telling a story. And a lot of people, when they hear the word conflict, they think of the melodrama. And they think of the action. No, no, no. It's shit like this. The character interactions that you get between Luffy and Law and just this whole dynamic right now. This is what makes for really great storytelling. Because that is right tension and conflict right there. And if you're Oda and you're writing this, you have so many different ways you can play around with this. So this... This was really good. Now, the other thing with this chapter is something that happens a little before this, where you have Law, and he's telling Chopper, like, hey, yeah, you little raccoon dog, like, I need you to study this medicine. Leave Caesar and Monet to me. I'll get him out the room. Just leave all this shit to me. Just study the drug. And Chopper... Just being as naive as he is, it's just like, wow, you must be pretty powerful just to walk up to him. At no point does it cross Chopper's mind, like, yeah, um, how exactly do you know them? How can you walk in here? Doesn't even cross Chopper's mind. And it's because he's just, he's naive. He's naive. I mean, he's like the sheltered little kid who goes off to college. I can say this shit because I'm not too far removed from being in college myself. But like, <sighs> what, like two years? Two and a half years? Anyway, like, yeah, two and a half years. So, this is the thing, right? This is the thing. When you look at... When you look at Chopper, he's like the naive kid who had never really done shit before. He goes off to college, goes to his first college party, probably goes to a frat party, right? Goes to his first frat party, and it's just so 
blown away by everything. Yeah, like it's like he's like, holy fucking shit. That's where that's how I always look at Chopper. Now, like longtime subs, you guys know, like I always joke, Chopper just looks like he's high because he's <clears throat> he's always so fascinated by everything. So that's me interesting to see when Chopper puts all that together. Now, the other thing is when Caesar is just talking about his whole plan, I thought that was pretty cool. And what in particular, I like how you know he's talking about the slime and how it was originally used. And I thought that was pretty good from Oda's perspective because Caesar, I didn't really care for him as a character. And now there's enough to him to where he's starting to become interesting. And so now this is this is getting good. But, you know, what I also thought was pretty cool is Smoker confirmed something that I was kind of thinking about. Which is because he's a Logia type and he's not in his actual body, he can't use his powers. Because he says it, you know, he's like, damn this body, it's a Shigi's. If I was in my real body, I could be in there in no time. And it's just like... So, technically, if Toshigi is able to, as smart as she is, she might be able to use Smoker's power. So, that's going to be interesting. And what it also says to me, right, is because you got, I don't know, this might not be right. I was going to say because Sanji is in Nami's body, his kicks aren't hitting as hard. And yet, at the same time, like, Nami leaves lumps all over the head. So, it's like... Is Oda throwing like the gag stuff in there? I wonder if that's kind of the case. Because like I remember reading a few things and like uh, Oda's fascination with Toriyama wasn't just Dragon Ball. It was also Dr. Slump and that was a gag manga. So I'm wondering if maybe, you know, Oda's just throwing a little gag element in there. Just having the raging female bitch that is typically the shonen heroine just going through leaving lumps on everybody's heads. And, you know, when they say, yeah, we got the straw hats, we, we got them. And Sanji just kind of comes up and says, I don't have time for weaklings like you. And then he smokes the cigarette. And he's like, got to be delicate with Nami's body. But yeah, fuck this shit. I'm smoking. Sorry about your lungs, baby. It's just like, wow, Sanji. When he has moments like that, I love the dude. But at the same time, it's just so hard. Because when you have moments like Zoro in this chapter where they're falling down. And what got me is when they're talking about the gas. I'm like, yeah, anybody can get drunk off of it. I'm like, anybody. Like, this dude, Zoro, is like a drinking professional. I don't care what kind of gas you got in that shit. Zoro's going to take that shit like a champ. And that's exactly what happens. They start falling towards the, the, the spikes. And Zoro just cuts the shit in half with his sword like it ain't nothing. I'm like, that is, that is cool. That is crazy cool. Like, the moment Zoro just, with the help of Luffy, cut the tsunami in half. It's just like, at that point, Zoro just shot the fuck up my radar, man. Like that that was that was pretty cool. That was pretty interesting. Yet at the same time, I also like how Brooke is just like, yeah, this is gonna be <laughs> get this shit. Get this shit. These are are uh Bigfoot's yeah, yeah, this this is Bigfoot's footprints. We're gonna find an, an abominable snowman. You're not gonna you fuck that. Lures them into a trap. And it's just like Brooke and Luffy and Chopper, <coughs> excuse me, and Frankie are probably the three biggest idiots on the four biggest idiots on the crew. Ironic, I'm calling them idiots and I count it wrong, but probably biggest idiots on the crew. And it's just like if Luffy was there, chances are, well, first off, the the Yeti snowman wouldn't have did shit to him. But the other thing is, it's just like Luffy's there. They damn sure would have made a bigger adventure out of that. So it's just like Luffy's going to be so fucking jealous, even though he's met the met the uh, Yeti brothers before and kicked one of the asses, Luffy's going to be so fucking jealous at the fact that that's exactly what happened with them. Is like, Luffy's gonna like, Yeti footprints. He's going to miss the whole rest of the story. That, that's what I love about the dude. It's like, he's got a one-track mind. It's like, he's got ADHD. So I, I thought that that was pretty cool just to see how Zoro and the rest of them kind of got in the point where they were, where it appeared as if they were, you know, captured and killed. So I thought that Thought that that was pretty cool, but you know, overall, this is a good chapter. It's a setup chapter, but at the same time, it was a very, very fun read. And this is one of the things I've really loved about One Piece. Probably, shit. Let me see from volume forty-three, 
volume 43 onward it's been a fun ass ride man like there have been so many so many fun arcs so far it's just like the adventure element really makes this series man like it ain't the fights like it it ain't the fights the fights are cool but it's the character interactions it's the adventure it's just seeing all these different personalities like the way Oda is just balancing all this shit is really really good and it doesn't feel like he's kind of forcing it where He's just like, okay, I had this character speak. Now this character needs to speak. Now this character needs to speak. It all feels really organic, man. So that was that was pretty good. So my chapter question to you guys is, when you look at One Piece as a story, right? You look at One Piece as a story, how does the adventure element of One Piece compare to other pirate stories that are out there? It doesn't have to be anime and manga. It could be something that's mainstream. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean, which I have not fucking seen. But yeah, I know, right? I'm under... I've been living under a rock. I just never got interested in it. But how does One Piece compare on an adventure element to all the stories that you've read? So, as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.